What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden. Um, we're gonna do a really quick video today about how to pick up your zebra pleco, what to look for, and uh, what type of uh, signs you need to look out for when you're picking up uh, your new zebra plecos. I highly recommend you buy at least a group of six to eight or more. I know that's a really large order and uh, most people will just roll their eyes when they hear that but if you are planning to keep them I highly recommend that you also plan to breed them they're one of the easiest p fish in the world to keep and to breed I have a video coming out about uh, how to see Brapleco it's quite extensive it's quite long uh, so if you haven't subscribed subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get up updated when that video gets uploaded it's coming up really soon um, also, please comment below and let me know if you want that video to be 40 minute long full length video or two 20 minute long uh, half length videos because it's actually 40 minutes long right now. I'm editing it and uh, they're scheduled three fish, which means they're endangered. They're going to go extinct in the wild if uh, current trend continues uh, in terms of habitat destruction as well as over harvesting by illegal you know, poachers or fish collectors. Uh, the illegal fish trade is still active. Uh, it is illegal to buy wild caught fish, uh, and uh, in Canada, it's it's quite hard to find them. It's almost impossible. So all your fish are gonna be, uh, and in Canada and in the North America in general, in USA as well, you are gonna find quite a bit of zebra plecos, and they're all gonna be captive bred. So my recommendation, first and foremost, and as all. It, this is probably going to be the number one most important thing buy them from a reputable breeder um, having said that I know that sounds quite uh, self-serving because I am a breeder myself and uh, that's just like me saying buy the fish from me right um, but the reason I'm saying that is because uh, buying the fish from a reputable breeder you definitely have a support system um, somebody to call back and ask questions uh, you're going to know exactly what parameters the fish comes from. You're going to know that they were well taken care of. Uh, you're going to know that they were fed a very healthy diet uh, based on the species requirement uh, because a reptile breeder will know what they're doing, more or less, hopefully, um, which is at least, you know, the hope. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's no guarantee, but you're going to get a very higher success rate from getting fish from a reputable breeder. You can also uh, find a lot of people online. Uh, a lot of people do fi ship fish overseas as well as within the continent. So uh, it's very easy to find uh, breeders uh, that have a good reputation and high quality fish. Um, secondly, um, you would want to see the fish or pictures of the fish, the actual fish you're getting. Uh, look at the fish very carefully. If the fish looks pink in any form, uh, that's a sign of distress and poor water quality. Uh, I would not recommend getting those fish. Um, wait, hold off till you find fish that are healthier. Um, a healthy zebra pleco is going to be white with very dark and distinct black lines. There's not going to be gray or any other blemish colors in between. The lines are going to be very distinct, uh, very def well defined, and the white is going to be very clear, almost milky white. Um, and uh, that's a very distinguishing characteristic of the fish and it's very easy to identify a healthy fish by looking at the skin quality of the fish um, I don't actually have any uh, pink fish in my collection but I will put some b-roll of the healthy fish for you to see uh, the next thing to look for uh, very important is uh, the belly especially if you're buying small fish uh, young uh, fish that are this the the most average size you're gonna find a zebra pleco is gonna be about 1.25 inches uh, which is about three centimeters long, um, about that long. Some of the fish that this guy right here, I'll put some B-roll of him. He's out actually, he's looking at me. Hey buddy. Uh, sort of the brother of my super white that I'm holding back, brother or sister, the bigger one. They're almost the same size, but this one's slightly bigger, maybe by like a fraction of an inch. Uh, anyways, uh, so you're going to find them at about three centimeters, and they're going to be about 100 to 125 dollars. Uh, American and about 150 bucks Canadian at that size um, and that's the size that you should be buying your fish at that's the size most breeders will hold off their fish till um, and uh, they will you should not buy a fish any smaller than an inch 
unless you are an expert, it's going to be very hard for you to bring them home and uh, keep them alive. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. You want to buy fish that are at least or an inch, preferably 1.25 inches of length or longer. Uh, you're going to pay quite a bit of money for these fish, but it's worth it because if you buy a fish, let's say, 0.75 centimeters long for, let's say, $100 or $75, uh, and, and you buy, let's say, four or five of them, and three of them end up dying, and you only get, let's say, two, you're going to spend more money that way than buying a fish that's a little bit bigger for a little bit more money. So um, buy fish that are at least an inch or more. Um, I would recommend at 1.25 minimum. Um, I know I stress that quite a bit. That's because people are really trying to sell their fish faster sometimes than that because they take quite a long time to grow. Um, the difference between an inch and 1.25 inches is about three to four months sometimes, even, you know, about realistically about three to four months. Uh, so, you know, keeping the fish in uh, a container, feeding, maintaining the containers, and uh, it's a lot of work when you have several containers of fry, and then you have a full-time job, because a lot of these people actually do have complete full-time jobs outside of breeding fish. So uh, they want get, to uh, get their fish out faster, so you will find the odd time fish that are smaller than an inch for sale. Um, so don't buy them at that size. Uh, you're not doing yourself a favor. Um, the next thing is when you are buying these smaller fish that are like, let's say, 1.25 inches, you want to look at the fish from above and you want to see a full fish. Like so, if this is the, the two fins, you want the fish to be like nice and straight on the stomach area, right? You don't want the stomach area leading to the tail to, to have like a, almost like that like a, a, you know, like a concave shape, you know, uh, you want it to be nice and straight, um, a little bit of a bulge is fine too, but a straight body fish is preferred, um, and also the belly, nice and, not like bulging out, but nice and full, uh, so like something, if you look at it from the bottom, you want to see something like that, you know, like that's the bottom of the fish, this is the stomach area, you know, this is the fish here, and you want to see like a nice, you know, not protruding out like this, sticking out on any sides or anything like that, but just like a nice, you know, healthy looking fish. Uh, that's something to really look out for because a lot of young fish have indigestion, uh, digestive issues, especially if you're buying them uh, from a wholesaler or uh, somebody that's uh, intermediate. Uh, they might have fed them an improper diet, blood worms and stuff like that, bad for them. Um, I don't feed blood worms, so I, I don't have personal experience, but from what I know from other breeders, Bloodworms are really bad for your hyphensastrus in general, so um, I would stay away from bloodworms. Um, also, they don't have any nutritional value, so like, there's no point of feeding anything bloodworms because it's 5% protein and 1.5% fat in 95% water or 93% water. So, uh, useless garbage, in my opinion, at least. Uh, and this fish require a uh, diet that has about 50% protein. So, if you're buying the fish that, let's say, has been sitting in a pet store for three months, and they've been feeding it flake food for the entire three months, you're definitely getting a, a malnutritious fish. Could have internal parasites, uh, could just be malnutrition, could be internal parasite. If it has a sunken belly, uh, sunken neck area uh, behind the pectoral fins or right above the dorsal, if you see any uh, um, in, you know, sunkenness or like any, like you can tell when you look at a healthy fish, it's nice and plump. And uh, if you don't see those signs, definitely don't buy that fish. Uh, so those are the signs of uh, uh, what you got to look out for. Um, and uh, definitely buy a fish that's over one and a half inches, if you can. Um, buy more than one, buy a group, uh, so that you have the ability to breed them. And uh, it's a long haul. There's no chance of them breeding before they're three years of old or older. Uh, they usually breed in a group, so you need a group for them to spawn. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it is getting late, my lights are going off, so I'm going to sign off. Uh, I don't know if I missed anything, I don't think I have. Uh, the other video is coming out. Uh, these are some of the points that I didn't cover in the next video, which is coming out next, uh, which is how to see Bra Uh It's 40 minutes long. Uh, I am deciding whether I'm going I'm to keep it at that length or I'm going to cut it in two parts, but it's coming out really shortly. So please subscribe down below and hit that notification icon. Uh, and as always, I thank you for your support.
and uh, please comment below and let me know if I missed anything and uh, if there's anything that you guys particularly look for when you're picking up Zebra Play Code. And uh, always, always, always get a group and get them in the intention of breeding them. If you are not going to breed them, don't get them. They're one of the easiest fish in the world to keep and breed. Uh, How to Zebra Play Code Guide is next. Uh, that will show all those inside tricks and trick, uh, tips. As well, there will be another video coming out after that. Uh, about spawning them in particular so stay tuned for all those as always I thank you for your support and uh, I'm sorry I haven't updated in the last couple of days uh, things have been a little hectic uh, with the breaking downstairs and stuff and I, my mental state wasn't here uh, with everything I was just a little rattled uh, but I am completely okay now uh, and uh, I will be updating more regularly you know hopefully daily uh, stay tuned and uh, thank you for sticking through and uh, I love you all I'll see you on the next video God bless